All right, so basically, yes, so this morning, editing, 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 bacon, get the anchor up, go sailing over there. Morning, everyone. From a very uh, gusty foredeck on Ruby Rose 2, Nick is unzipping the sail bag, which means only one thing. We are going sailing today, as always. We are currently in uh, Co Mac, I think, and we're heading to Co Cup or Co Cut, I don't know behind me here. Only 17 mile passage today, so not too extensive, but I think it's gonna be a good sail actually. We've got quite the breeze, so should be nice. Sun's come back out, which is always pleasant. And I'm sad to leave this island because it's stunning. We really, hello. <laughs> Nick's repping the old uh, Aussie Bunnings situation. Today, heading off again. Before we do all that, I think we're gonna have some breakfast. Funny feeling, it's uh, bacon sandwiches on the menu, which is very exciting. I'm Teresa, this is Nick, and this is Ruby Rose 2, our floating home. Join us as we settle into life on board our brand new catamaran, documenting our adventures and never shying away from the reality of boat life. Subscribe to our channel and leave a comment because we love to hear from you and a big thanks to our community of patrons. Happy Sunday, everybody. Um, So what have we got today? It is... Sunday morning we had actually a great night at anchor. We bedded the anchor in. Hopefully we can break it out. So let us just show you what Sunday morning is like on Ruby Rose Duh. The Admiral. The Admiral is sat there making her breakfast demands. <laughs> we ended up on this beautiful little island yesterday and we're just zipping around on a moped and found an artisan bakery. So we have freshly baked rolls and the best thing to do with freshly baked rolls, bacon. So we have bacon sandwiches for breakfast. Apply the sauce, Australia. <laughs> Tomato sauce with everything. On pies, you bloody heathen. And sausage rolls. Oh, wow. All right, well. All right, goodbye, Co Mac. We're sad to be leaving. All right, we're putting the main up. Jib's just getting blanketed by the main, not really settling down. I don't think it's going to settle down unless we change the... It's okay? I don't think it's, giving... it's not giving us any drive. Yeah, okay. All right, jib's filled, main's up. And this is the bit where everyone in the comments goes, but what about that asymmetric spinnaker that you guys have? Perfect conditions. You're absolutely right. Um, but, you know, we're cruisers and when we have like, 10 miles to go. I'm sorry, we don't put the isometric up. <laughs> That's just way. We get it out. We're telling we manhandle it out the locker. Get it up, finally. It'll take us half an hour to do that. Get it up, bring it down, get it up, get it down because we've got the lines all pissed. Yep. And we'll be there. Yep. If this was a 50 mile passage, we needed to make, oh, we would have it up. Yep. Not on a 10 mile passage. No, we're doing five knots. That'll do. Although I'm sure there are plenty of cruisers out there who just would get that thing up at any opportunity and this would be a great one. But at the moment we've got lovely downwind conditions. We're doing uh, five and a half, six knots just with the main up and we've got about 10 knots apparent wind. What's our true wind, babe? True wind is 14. True wind is 14. Apparent wind angle is 143. We just realized we've still got a reef in from yesterday. Uh, so we'll shake that out and see how we go. Yeah, that looks better. We just need to raise the halide a little bit more. Yep, we, we should be good. All right, we're putting the preventer on for the very first time. I don't know if I 
love that you have to go to the end of the boom to get the preventer on, although I suppose it should usually be fairly like good conditions when you... I have just found out that you can't have the preventer there. So it's going to have to be brought forward yeah. and tied to the mast end. Yeah. And the reason is that if you, got, if you have it there, because it's obviously uh, spliced, yeah. like it's a lot thicker that end and it's stuck in the boom yeah. because the, the cord is thicker so it jams in there. Yeah. But the preventer needs to be brought forward. But I don't love it because that's got snap shackle on it. Yeah. And an accidental jibe with a mainsail of that size 15 plus knots of wind, that snap shackle will just go. It, what, it's what is a better option? Actually running um, a non-locking, a non-locking XO knot on it. I know, but we've only got a little cleat. Oh no, we don't, we have a big cleat. But you know, it's all a learning. I, I think on this, and I'll refer back to this and also write a note, in my extensive Google keep shit to do when we get back to talk to Seawind about, is uh, how that preventer system needs to be modified. Well, I mean, this is something we can easily do. We can take it back to the uh, mast, surely, ourselves. We Put can, up. but we need a clip on point. Yeah. And it also, we have to make sure that it doesn't foul anything. Yeah. Because there's a lot of lines running around there. Yeah. Okay. But I assume this is a preventer system they use for all their boats. They don't have one for the best time version of the 1260. Apparently, it is the same as a 1600. Yeah. I will not cruise it deeper than 150. With the main up. That's where we need our parasailer. <laughs> We can't. Uh, Let's put this out on the internet because I cannot get an answer from Seawind on this. This boat is uh, it's masthead rigged. It's not nine tenths fractional. Talking to James, the chief engineer on the whole Seawind Building 70 project, he said that this boat is not meant to be sailed with just a foresail, a coloured sail, a big asymmetric without the main because you risk mast inversion. Because essentially you're not distributing the load on the mast using the sliders on the main sail that kind of like distribute everything. So he said, do not sail this boat without a main sailor. But yet that is completely at odds with running a parasailer, which we have tried on a monohull many, many times to sail with the, just with the main sail up and it doesn't work. So there is, there are two schools of thought. I cannot get clarity from Seawind. One, the owner of Hull 5, Phil, is a whole, you know, he has a whole love in for parasailers. So I still don't know the answer to this. I still do not know uh, whether a masthead rigged spinnaker or a parasailer would invert or could invert the mast. I still don't know from Seawind whether this is likely, whether they will cover warranties on any mast inversions. I still do not know whether or not you can fly a parasailer with the main up on a catamaran. I have seen pictures of it. It may be that on a cat it's different. I don't know. So yeah, this is one of these whole learning things. That's where we are. So anyway, we are doing four heady knots. All right, we're coming into the anchorage. Not sure whether this anchorage is going to be particularly well protected or not from the swell. Uh, it looks calm from here though. So fingers crossed, fingers crossed. So we've got our... Uh... 6.9 metres. Just wait until she's stationary. Okay, go. Got 15 metres out. Got 38 metres out. Hey. Yep. You beautiful little birdie. Who's your mummy? Hey. take a shit on the deck and then leave. Something has occurred to me. And I kind of think that one thing is that we do everything in this boat kind of half by muscle memory and half by kind of how we used to go with Ruby Rose and the monohull before that and the monohull before that. But one thing that is bleeding obvious is the amount of space that we have to actually walk around and check stuff. You know, yeah. anything less than 25 knots of wind, going up on that cut on the on the hard top is easy. Yeah. Going up to check stuff is easy. Going up to pull, pull going forward is easy. And on Ruby Rose, we were always like, don't leave the cockpit, don't leave the cockpit. Yeah. This is a lot easier. 
yeah. And I kind of think I just have to get to the mindset of go and check it. Just get up on the coach roof. As long as the sea state is, I mean, we've been, I've been up there and I'm like, this is not good. But, you know, coming into an anchorage, dropping a main, yeah, it's pretty easy, you know? So, Tracy, so you listen to me. I'm talking to talk to you. You seem to be scrolling through Instagram. Sorry, I'm, I'm not scrolling to Instagram at all. I'm... What are I'm, you doing? I'm looking at places to go. This is my life. I research everything. <laughs> what are you doing? This is why we do all this. which has a restaurant. This water is crystal clear. I wish the sun was out so we could see in all its glory, but we can't choose the weather. This water clarity, I think is as good as we've seen anywhere in Thailand ever. <laughs> it's probably the best. Maybe like papaya salad and something and some prawns or something. Oh, okay. Even without the sun shining, this place is incredibly beautiful. I mean, look at this water, look at those trees, those palm trees on that beach. We have crispy pork, we have a sour Thai prawn salad. Perfect. Some coconut soup yeah. coming. I appreciate that they give you a proper soup spoon. Such a vandaloo, aren't they? I do yeah, like my soup. Vandaloo. It's a family <laughs> trait. <laughs> I remember the first time you tolerating my soup was when you had the flu and you were so, I've never seen anyone so sick and I used to be a paramedic. The only thing that you would eat is like chicken soup. Oh, this is good. Yeah, really nice, isn't mm. it? I definitely got to come back here. We, unfortunately we can't stay this time. We are a little bit time constrained for various reasons. We're going to have to head back to Pattaya very soon, but we're going to come back here as soon as possible and spend some more time down here. This resort is called Captain Hooks and uh, they've got a dinghy dock which is great, very handy for us and it is just so beautiful. So if ever for whatever reason you find yourself in, uh, where are we, Kokut, Kokut, then, and you need somewhere to stay, then this looks like as good a place as you're going to get on the entire island. It is stunning. There we go, can you see Ruby Rose tree behind me? She's there. This camera probably doesn't pick her up too well, but anyway. And if you can hear like what sounds like an alarm going off in the background, it's actually cicadas. And we found that out last night. <laughs> so we're like, what is that noise? It's just the insects in the tree. Well, this has proven to be one of, I think, our favorite places. I don't know whether we're quite doing it justice on film because it's been kind of like a grey day and it's, you know, the colours are all very muted, it's very kind of desaturated because of the cloud cover and the fact that we haven't had that beautiful kind of direct sunlight. But there's just a vibe here that I can't even put into words. It's just so chill, so relaxed and beautiful and tranquil. Tranquil is the word. If you like the sound of that then please subscribe to our channel and leave us a comment down below let us know what you think give us a thumbs up we'll see you next week take care bye